Som Chin Kui. President, please be seated. The chamber is now back in session. Court officer, please invite to TCCP 286 and Madame Sun Solida, staff of TPO, into the courtroom. President, good afternoon, Madam Civil Party. What is your name? Answer, my name is Chia Deep. Question, what is your date of birth? Please wait until the tip of the microphone turns red. Answer, I was born on the 7th of April, 1954. Question, where was your birthplace? I was born in Pramat Day Village, Chamkalu District, Kampung Cham Province. Question What is your current address? Answer The same place. Question What is your current occupation? Answer I am a rice farmer. What are the names of your parents? Answer. My name is Ong Chia. My, ma my mother's name is Chai Lai. Question. What is your husband's name and how many children do you have? Answer. My my husband's name is Saw so Thuyen. We have four children. President, thank you, Ms. Madam Civil Party. The Chamber invite you to testify in this courtroom today in your capacity as a civil party in the proceeding in front of the Chamber. Therefore, at the end of the, your testimony, you have the right to present the statement of your harms and sufferings. It means that the harms and suffering that were inflicted upon you during the K regime. Madam Civil Party, have you ever testified or provide interviews with the investigator from the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges? 
And if you have how many times and where did they happen? Answer. I met three times and it took place at the uh, ECCC. Question. Before you came to this courtroom, have you already reviewed the documents that you have uh, provided to the investigators in order to, uh, for you to recall those statements? Answer, yes, I have reviewed them already. Question, based on your recollection, could you tell the chamber whether the written, written record of interviews that you have read were consistent with what you have uh, given with, to the investigators during your interview? Answer, yes, I have reviewed all of them. I review all of them and they were uh, like what I provided. President, thank you, Madam. In the tes testimony uh, question session of this uh, civil party, we uh, follow uh, internal rule 91B of the internal rule, and we give the floor to the lead co-lawyer for civil party to put question first, and the combined time for lead co-lawyer for civil party and the co-prosecutor are two sessions. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon to all of you. It is uh, our colleague Sim Savan who's going to put questions this afternoon to the civil party. President, the floor is given to Council Sim Sivon. Sim Sivon, thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honor, and parties in this chamber. And good afternoon, Madam Civil Party. My name is Sim Sivon, the Council from the Legal Defenders Association. I have a number of questions to put to you, and I would like to seek your collaboration to answer those questions. My questions are related to the facts on the marriage during the K regime. But before I ask those questions, I would like to ask you about the background questions. Before 1975, where did you live? The, I mean, your village, commune, and province. Answer, before 1975. In 1974, particularly, I lived with my family members, and we were farmers. I lived in Pramat Day village, Chamkalu, district of Cham province. Question. At that time, how many people were there in your family? 
answer. President, Madam Civil Party, please wait until the microphone, the tip of the microphone turn red. Civil Party. Before 1975, I lived with my parents and my siblings. We were rice farmers. Question. President, Madam Civil Party, please activate your microphone. Civil Party lawyers. And after that, do you continue to live? Did you continue to live in the same village and commune? Answer. In 1974, I don't remember the months. I left my family to join the army. I was in the mobile unit of the military. Question. You said that you joined the military. And who introduced you to the army? What's the name of that person and what was the occupation of that person? Answer. I joined the army through Comrade Han and Hien, who were the committee of uh, Yomkala district. Question. You joined the army or you joined the mobile unit? Could you uh, clarify on this matter? Were you in the female mobile unit or in the military? Answer. I was in the mobile unit, but they did not call the mobile unit. They simply called the transport mobile unit that was in charge of uh, transporting wounded soldiers from the battlefield. But sometimes our forces were also uh, deployed to, to fight. Question. When you were in the transport mobile unit, how many members of your unit and who was your supervisor? What's the name of that person? Answer. At my unit, there was a battalion consisting of 300 people and it was divided into smaller units. Question, what was your responsibility and where were you based? Answer. President, Madame Civil Party, wait until the microphone is activated. Civil Party. My forces consisted of three groups and we were based at three separate places. My force was based to the north of Phnom Prok Phnom Srei and another one was based along the river bank. That's what I know. Question. When did you first enter Phnom Penh? Answer, it was in January when the attack on Phnom Penh began, but I was based at the outskirts of the city. After the city was uh, seized and then I entered the city. Question, you told the chamber that you entered Phnom Penh for the first time in January. You were based at the outskirts of the city and what was your responsibility at that time? Answer. I was at the suburban area of Phnom Penh. I transported ammunition and transported the dead bodies of soldiers and the wounded, the wounded soldiers. 
but I also participated in fighting with other combatants. Question, what happened next? What day, day or months that you actually entered Phnom Penh? Answer, on the 17th of April, I entered Phnom Penh. On the 17th of April, the combatants entered first, and I entered later. Question, what did you do, and where did you stay then? Answer, first, I, when I entered Phnom Penh, I stayed to the north of Wat Phnom. I stay in houses of people to the north of Phnom Penh, but those houses were empty. Later on, my force were moved to the south of Kalamat Hospital, and we stayed there for a while, but I cannot recall how many months and days I were there. And later on, my forces, some of my forces were, were withdrawn. Some were put to join the division, and some were put to join the commerce. And that's what I know. Question, what about the big group that were put to join with the commerce? What did you do when you joined that force? Answer, my big group was in charge of, of transporting the uh, things from people's house. Question. When you said that you transported spoil of war, so where did you take those things from and to where? Answer. One day when I uh, collected those spoil of war, some of my forces transported silver things and those silver things were collected from the royal palace. But I did not uh, went to the royal palace. I simply helped organize those things after they were collected. And there was a statue collected from a factory. And there were many different kinds of statues. Some of them were full lengths and they were brought in to store in a house. And those were mainly the statue of Apsaras. Yeah. Question. When you worked in Phnom Penh, did you ever see the leadership of the regime? Answer. When I based in Phnom Penh, I met some leaders. One day, some like Sopanavun, who came from Laos to, um, to, estab to establish embassy in Cambodia, and I, at that time I saw Pan Nut Yeng Seri and other leaders, whom I did not recognize all, came to welcome him. Question. Did you ever see Kiel Sompon? Answer. Yes. I met Kiel Sompon at Onalaum Pagoda. He came to open a session for the female uh, combatants to study, and I met him there once. And later on, I met him at the stadium at Borei Kaila. It was on the day when Hunam Hujun was tried. At that time, he called the messengers of Hunam Hujun to be interrogated. I did not stay there long. And after the messengers gave the answers, I came to stay at the hospital. And that was it. I did not meet him anymore. Since then, at that time, we addressed him as Om or Uncle. Question, 
you told the chamber that you met Kiu Sampon twice, once at the meeting at Onalaum Pagoda. I want to ask you that during the meeting at Onalaum Pagoda, what did he talk about? Answer. He said that all female cadres uh, need to work for the state. And those with the age above 19 from all ministries needed to be uh, arranged to get married. We should not keep them unmarried. Question. When he said that male and male youth needed to be arranged to get married, did he say that from what age that they should be arranged to get married? Did he say that they should be uh, married voluntarily, voluntarily without any force? Answer. He did not say about whether uh, the marriage was based on love or not, but uh, he just simply said uh, they should be arranged to get, to get married. We should not keep them old without marriage. Only those who were still young that should be uh, kept unmarried. Question. When he said that all the male and male youth should be arranged to get married, did he explain the reason why they should get married? Answer. He said that they should be get married so that they would produce children to, and when, we, when they produce children, we will have more force to defend our territory. Question. Now my question is related to the marriage. When Q. Sampon mentioned about the marriage of the mature youth, did, were you also arranged to get married during the K regime? Answer. After he said that, my forces were arranged to get married. Question. When were you married? Answer, I, married, I was married in 1975, but I, did not, I do not remember the months. Question, who arranged or matched you up with the man or informed you about the marriage? Answer. The person who arranged for my, read, for my merit was Pan, my immediate supervisor. Question. When your supervisor told you to get married, you did not refuse, you simply follow his or, his or her order? Answer. When he or she told me that, I, re I refused because I, I said that I was still young and I wanted to sell the, uh, the regime. I, re I could refuse for the first uh, time. And the second time, I kept on refusing. And on the third occasion, he instructed me to go to Orisai Market, and I went there with him. And over there, I was told that because I was the children of Anka, I had to follow the advice of Anka. After my refusal for the first time and second time were successful, but for the third time, I could not refuse, so I simply followed the order from Anka. 
question. So you agreed to get married during the uh, third order. Where did the marriage took place? Answer. We were married at Damco Market. Question when? Answer. In the morning, they started to have a ceremony, but the real uh, matching up ceremony was in the afternoon. Question. Were you aware of the, the fact that uh, you would be arranged to get married beforehand? Answer. After the supervisor asked me, I was informed that three days later I would be married. And three days later, the marriage ceremony took place. Question. So three days later after you were informed, your marriage ceremony took place. During the three-day period, did you inform your parents or your siblings? Did you consult with your parents and relatives? For example, that Anka now arranged marriage for me, and whether there was any uh, consent from your parents related to your marriage? Answer, I never consulted with my parents or siblings because they were uh, living far away from me. Although I wanted to ask for permission to visit them, but they did not allow me to do so. So I simply followed the order from Anka. Question. So your parents and siblings did not attend your marriage ceremony. Is that correct? Answer. My parents and siblings did not attend the ceremony. Only the Anka people attended it. Question. I want to ask you about you and your husband, whether both of you knew each other before your marriage. Answer. We never knew each other. We knew each other only, the, on, only on the day that we were matched up. Question. How many couples were arranged to marry on the same day with, you, with yours? There were 12 couples. Question. Did you know the names of those people who were married on the same day with you? Answer, among the 12 couples, I knew three couples. Sai, Ta, Sao, Wei, Ji, and Liang. I knew only these six people. Question. I want you to clarify on this point. Among the 12 couples who marry on the same day with you, My question is about the female, female side. Were they from the same unit with yours or from other units? Answer. They came from different units. We did not know each other. They came from different locations and all were brought into Damco market and I don't know which units they came from. Question, I also want you to clarify on a matter related to your family. Did you know uh, where he worked and what was his background? President, Madame Civil Party, please wait until the microphone is activated. 
civil party. Among the 12 couples, the female size were also female combatants, and the male size were also male combatants. But the male combatants were all handicapped because they could not fight against the enemy any longer. They were uh, brought in to get married. Some of them lost legs, some lost hands, some were uh, had a one eye blind, all were handicapped soldiers. Question, you said that all the males who were brought into merit were handicapped soldiers. So was your spouse also a handicapped person? Answer, my spouse uh, had a problem with his one of his legs. He could not walk properly. Question. I also want you to explain us clearly about the marriage ceremony. How was the ceremony conducted? Answer. During the marriage ceremony, they, they pair us up because we did not know each other. We knew each other only after we heard the announcements of our names. And then the Anka advised us to follow Anka's order. And then each of the couple had to make the commitment to their marriage. And we had to make commitment in front of the symbols of the Anka. That was the uh, the sickle and the rice. You said that each couple has to make a, a resolution. And what were you told to say? And the uh, Anka gave us instruction to uh, follow and strictly adhere to the disciplines of Anka to love one another and to strive to, to work hard to build the country. Question. Who actually uh, presented the process of the uh, resolution? Answer. I uh, did not know who actually uh, made the uh, presentation. I saw those uh, comrade bones, but I did not know from uh, as to which Anka they re represented. questioned the 12 uh, couples who were married at the same time, in particular your uh, couple. How old were they and how old were you? And so uh, I was uh, 19 and my husband was 26. As for other couples, uh, they were of uh, similar ages. Question. You said your husband was a disabled person, and what about the 12 uh, men of the other 12 couples? Did they have a right to select uh, this woman or uh, that man, or could you exchange amongst the people that were there? Answer. Amongst the uh, 12 
couples, we did not have a choice to select our partner. It was the Onka who assigned us to this person or that person. Question. And after you stood up and made your resolution, where were the 12 couples sent to rest? Answer after the marriage, uh, we were divided into groups. In my groups, there were three uh, couples, and I could not say about uh, other couples in other groups. Questions and uh, regarding the three uh, couples in your group, uh, where did you stay that night? Answer. The three couples uh, wants to rest at the Tudampu Market. Uh, that is the place where I worked. Question. Can you tell the chamber about the events that uh, unfolded that night? That is on the very night that you got married. What happened to you? Answer. When I went to rest at the Tutapu Market, one person told me that I should be careful because uh, we were under monitor. There were three, uh, the three couples stayed in three separate rooms in one house, and at night time I tried to uh, listen, and then I could hear the uh, footsteps. And they actually uh, went up the uh, ladder to uh, try to listen to us. Uh, they were the militia people. And uh, they went up the staircase, and they became quiet. And we ourselves did not dare to make any sound. Question. Also, during the uh, first night of the day that you made your resolution, did you consent to consummate the marriage with your husband? Answer, no. I did not consummate with uh, my husband since I was afraid of uh, both the uh, militia and uh, the, my husband. I did not dare to make any sound. Question after you made uh, your resolution, how long or how many days did you remain living with your husband? And uh, after the marriage, we were allowed to rest at our workplace and we stayed there for uh, three days. Then my husband and their husbands were sent to their respective workplace and I uh, went to my workplace and that applies uh, to all couples. Question. And when did you consent uh, to have sexual intercourse or to consummate the marriage for the first time with your husband? And uh, we were allowed to meet uh, for every 10 uh, to 15 days. So when we uh, met, then uh, that was the time that I consummated the marriage. Questioned for the first time that you uh, consummated the marriage, that is about a fortnight after your marriage. Can you tell the chamber whose choice was it uh, to consummate the, the marriage? Was it uh, your husband's or was it yours alone? Answer. It was uh, his choice. Question. Let me backtrack a little bit. You said that after you made the resolution on that very first night, you knew that uh, militia men came to monitor you. 
and in the case there the one of twelve of the twelve couples who didn't agree uh, to stay together, what would happen to them? Or were you aware of such an incident? And so if a minister found out that uh, a, a couple didn't uh, agree to stay with one another, the, the persons uh, or the couples will be called for uh, re-education or refashion. Question. You stated that a fortnight after you met with your uh, husband again, what happened in the following months? How frequent did you meet with your husband? And so, uh, during the regime, and it was not only for me but for everyone else, the uh, quickest was a, a week that we could meet. And sometimes, if my ha my husband was uh, employed to work far, then we would meet in a month or two. At one stage, he was sent to work at Kiriru Mountain in order to find a vegetable for his uh, unit, and I met him like once uh, every one or two. Question. You said you did not uh, light uh, the marriage, but you were forced to. President, the Council for Kiu Sampon, you had the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I object to this uh, question that she was forced. Uh, so far, Madame Civil Party does not uh, testify to, to that fact. She said that she refused uh, the proposal for two times and she consented to the third proposal. Thank you. Lawyer for Civil Parties. I asked that question to the civil party uh, that she was forced to get married because she says that for the first and the second time she refused the marriage and for the third time she refused but uh, her refusal was denied. For that reason she had no choice but to go along with the instruction because her refusal was denied. And she also said that she did not agree to marry her husband, and for that reason, she did not consummate the marriage on the night of the marriage, and that she was forced uh, to get married. President, uh, Council, please try to follow the facts and don't try to ask any hypothetical question. Council, thank you, Mr. President. And Madam Civil Party, allow me uh, to move on. You said you and your husband did not uh, love one another, did not even know of one another beforehand. Can you tell the chamber of your, uh, or how you felt in the future, or whether uh, you would continue that relationship with your husband or that you would uh, separate from him? Answer. I did not like my uh, husband, but I had uh, I did not know what to do. Of course, uh, I suffered because Anka forced me to get married. But since uh, we got married, I did not know where else to go, where I would flee to. There was nowhere for me uh, to go, so I had to uh, go along. That's the best I can describe. Question. You were a transporter, a leading transporter for 
the party and that the party organized a marriage for you. Were you happy with the marriage? Or you felt sad and unhappy after Anka organized such marriage for you? And so, as I have stated, I did not like it and I did not want to be a married woman, but Anka organized it for me. What else can I do? So I had to follow along since I could not refuse it. I had uh, no other choice. Question. Can you tell the chamber whether you were happy when you were uh, organized to marry your husband? And so when Onka organized the marriages, I was not happy and I, uh, my tears, uh, actually I wept almost uh, every day. I felt the pain, but I could not do anything. Question. You said that you did not uh, like your husband and that you wept almost every day so before you got even uh, married. And when you were uh, it started uh, to make a resolution that day, was the process similar to the traditional process of marriage that is happening every day, almost every day here in Cambodia? And so I already said, so there were no process of uh, pray or blessing. We were called, our names were called out to match with uh, the uh, male side. Then Anka gave us some instructions and then we had to uh, salute the uh, party's flag. And that's uh, basically uh, the process. It lasted uh, for less than an hour. Question. I'd like you to uh, make a comparison uh, between the making a resolution, that is, your marriage ceremony under the Khmer Rouge regime, to the traditional way that it was held before the Khmer Rouge regime and the one that is uh, being practiced in Cambodia. And so. Uh, if you compare the marriage to place under the Khmer Rouge to the uh, previous practice before and after the Khmer Rouge regime, it is absolutely different. During the Khmer Rouge, we, uh, Khmer Rouge, we were matched up uh, in five or ten couples uh, each time, but at present, it is uh, very different. Only a couple is uh, celebrated to the marriage during one ceremony, and uh, they were surround they are surrounded by their relatives, parents, and grandparents who all blessed them. And if you compare to what happened under the Khmer Rouge, it's like you compare the earth to the sky. Of course, I felt upset when I thought of the way that I uh, was married to the uh, current practice. Question. Regarding your physical and uh, emotional sufferings for the loss of your family members and your uh, property, can you tell the chamber when you think of the way that you were made to make a resolution and that you had to consummate the marriage with the husband that you did not like? What is your emotion? And so every time I think of uh, what happened, that I did not like my husband, and that I was organized to marry him by Anka, I feel, I feel the pain in my chest. Question. During the regime of three years and eight months, 
did you lose any of your family members or relatives or loved ones? And uh, as for the uh, losses, I lost everything. I joined the revolution in order to defend the rear battlefield. But when I went to the front battlefield, I lost my relatives, family members at the rear battlefield. I felt the pain for such losses, and I still feel the pain now. Question. You said you uh, lost your family members and relatives and that you feel the pain uh, for such losses. Can you tell the chamber how many family members or relatives uh, that you lost uh, during the regime? And uh, personally, I lost four siblings. Then I lost my nieces and nephews and there were about 15 of them. I lost my uncles and uh, great uncles and there were about uh, 10 of them. And for that reason, I suffered too much. I feel the pain for such losses and every time I think of it, I weep. Wherever I go, I would weep when I think of what happened to me. Question. And in addition to your personal pain, how did you feel when you learned that uh, your family members, relatives, and loved ones uh, lost their lives uh, unjustly? And uh, the loss of family members and relatives give him much pain. And I only depend on this chamber to uh, give me the uh, solution to uh, such losses. Question. And during the Democratic Cambodia regime, did you lose any of your uh, personal property or belonging, for example, or your land, your house, or uh, your cattle? And uh, since uh, the, uh, the regime I feel the pain uh, physically because when I return to my village, I lost everything. I lost my house, land, cattle, family members, and relatives. Only the pain remains uh, with me. Question. What gives you uh, the most pain and uh, suffering and that you uh, cannot forget it? Can you tell the chamber? I can never forget uh, for the uh, loss of my siblings, parents, family members, and relatives. I feel the most pain for the loss of my uh, younger brother, who was accused of uh, committing a, a moral offense. He was hung upside down against a tree. He was bitten and his uh, body became uh, black and later on he was uh, thrown in through a well. Although I did not know which well he was uh, thrown in. And that was the most pain that uh, remained uh, with me. Mm. 
then again to the losses of my other uh, siblings and family members. However, it is uh, vividly in my memory that is for the loss of my innocent younger brother. Question. Can you tell the chamber how you are uh, coping at the present? Or how have you been uh, coping after the fall of the Khmer Rouge regime in 1979? Since uh, you testified that you lost everything, you lost your land, your house. How have you been uh, coping? Answer. After the uh, losses of uh, my family members, relatives, and uh, personal properties, uh, house, land, uh, rice fields, I have to look after and take care of my two uh, younger uh, siblings and other relatives. And we started in the most miserable way. We had nothing to work in the rice field. Everything was done out of pure uh, labor. And I myself uh, has not been that well physically. Even at present, and as I said, uh, the pain remains uh, with me until the day I die. Question concerning your health after the fall of the uh, Meru's regime. How have you been uh, coping uh, with your health? And uh, after uh, the fall of the uh, Khmer Rouge regime. I found it very difficult uh, to, to uh, survive as we did not have any uh, equipment uh, to use to work in a rice field. We did not have money to buy anything. I became unhealthy and I became emaciated. And I never feel happy, even at uh, the moment, I do not feel happy. And as I said, the pain will remain with me till I die. And that is the result of the suffering from the regime. And Mr. President, I am done, and thank you, Madam Civil Party. President, uh, thank you, uh, lawyer for civil parties, and I'd like now to hand the floor to the co-prosecutors. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. President, and your honors. Good afternoon, all the parties. Madam civil party, I will continue putting questions to you up to the break time at 2.40. I'll start by asking you to tell the chamber about what happened from 1974 to 1975. You stated a while ago that you were engaged in the revolution. During that period or thereafter, were you a member of the Revolutionary Youth Wing of the party? Uh, I do not understand when you say that whether I was a member of the Youth League. Yes, 
the Kampuchea Communist Party included both youths, that is those who are not married, as well as adults. So youths who are not married could be members of that communist movement. Was that your case or not? I still don't understand about the Youth League. When I joined the revolution, I was a part of the female combatant unit, and I was in the uh, transportation uh, to carry the wounded at the uh, battlefield. I carried the wounded, the dead, and the ammunition. Fine. Uh, Did uh, your unit have any kind of code name? For example, you spoke about a battalion of 300 people earlier. Did this battalion have a name? And if so, in which battalion were you, in which division, in which regiment? When I first uh, joined, it was Battalion 401, but I did not know which uh, regiment it uh, belonged to, because uh, there was only one female battalion, and mostly they were all males. You said that between 74 and 75, you worked uh, to the north of Phnom Penh. Were you stationed close to Udong? I started working from Udong, Kampong Lung Lung, and moved uh, toward Phnom Penh. And we entered Phnom Penh on 17 April. In 1974, do you remember what happened at Udong? Was Udong captured by the Khmer Rouge forces? Do you remember that or not? I cannot recall it because I arrived in the area in early 1975. I arrived in late 1974, early 1975. And during that first year before the capture of Phnom Penh on 17 April 1975, did you ever have a chance of meeting uh, leaders from the CPK, that is to say, high-ranking Khmer Rouge leaders? I never met them at the battlefields. At the battlefields, I met only the commanders and deputy commanders of the division. But I did not meet the senior leaders. Merci. Uh, thank you. Now I would like to turn to the period that followed uh, the capture of Phnom Penh. You said that uh, you gathered war spoils, in particular silver objects. In which unit of the Ministry of Commerce were you part of? And do you know as well who was the Minister of Commerce back then? Calvi. At that time, I was based in charge of the War Spoils Unit, and we collected everything 
President, Madam Civil Party, please hold on. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. This is more than an objection. I, in fact, I'm requesting clarification to make sure that we're speaking about the same thing. In French, I heard, uh, or I did not hear Ministry of Commerce. I heard Commerce Group. And since we heard people often speaking about the Commerce Group before this chamber, Maybe before uh, supposing that we're speaking about the Ministry of Commerce, maybe we should ask for clarification to make sure that there is no extrapolation or confusion. Très bien. Fine. Um, so your unit, which was in charge of the war spoils, did it depend on the Ministry of Commerce or um, on another higher rank, such as the state warehouses or another entity? I would like to object to the way uh, that the co-prosecutor is putting the question. It's again a multiple choice question. Maybe he could put the question in a broader way. In that case, I'll have no objection rather than feeding uh, the uh, civil party with leads that do not come directly uh, from the civil party. Answer, Mr. President, if I, may, if I may answer, it is the civil party herself who said that part of her unit had been incorporated into a commerce unit. So, Madam Civil Party, could you please specify this? This is what I heard earlier. Do you confirm this? Or can you tell us in on which higher uh, echelon the uh, war spoils uh, depended on? I said already that my unit consisted of 300 personnel. Uh, one, one unit uh, were moved to Kampong Saum, and my unit was moved to join with the commerce, and Uncle Tut was in charge of the commerce. His house was also close to the war spoils unit, the place where the silver item were stored. I would like to clarify that I was part of the Ministry of Commerce. Uncle Tut alias Koi Thun. He had two names. <coughs> Yeah. Fine. Maybe a point of clarification regarding your marriage. When you got married, were you still part of that uh, war spoils unit under uh, the leadership of the Ministry of Commerce, or had you already been uh, relocated uh, to the uh, textile unit uh, in Orusei? <laughs> When I was married, I, wa I was with the Ministry of Commerce. And after my marriage, I was moved to the textile unit at Odyssey Market. And uh, did this textile unit depend on the Ministry of Commerce or of another ministry or of another higher level? The sewing place was also under the Commerce Ministry, and Uncle Kun was the supervisor at Odyssey Market. He was in charge of both the war spoils unit and the sewing unit at Odyssey Market. Do you know what happened to Uncle Kun, who led both of these units during the regime? I did not know. I did not know what happened to him. Uh, 
Brinya. President, thank you. It is now convenient time for a break. The chamber will take a 20 minutes break. The court is now